Hello again, and welcome to Geography 340 Climatology. Uh, I'm Zach Hilgendorf, and this lecture we're going to be talking about fundamental terms and concepts we're going to be talking about and drawing from throughout the course. The first of those might seem like the simplest. What is weather? I look outside right now, I'm seeing clouds rolling by, it's a partly sunny day, there's some wind. Those types of observations are exactly what weather is. It is the short-term state of the atmosphere at a given place, as opposed to climate. What is climate? Well, it is the characteristic long-term pattern of weather at a given place or in a given region, or the statistical properties of the atmosphere at a given place or a given region. Whereas weather might be a dot on a graph, a recording, the temperature, the amount of precipitation, the trajectory of the storm. Climate is the trend. It's the trend line. So let's look at Eau Claire, for example. Here we see, uh, this is from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. Um, this is the monthly and yearly cycle for 2022. So we see a few things here. We see the weather. What does that look like? Well, it looks like the squiggles. It's the noise. It's the deviations here. It is, you know, on the top, uh, those are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, those fluctuations are daily. So that's the daily temperature fluctuations, the daily weather. The bottom is precipitation in inches. We see deviations of that. So as you know, as, as, as brown or as the dark green. So whereas weather is the squiggles and the noise, climate's the trend. And it all comes together in understanding what a climate in a given place is. The climate in Eau Claire, Wisconsin is gonna look very different than the climate in Santa Barbara, California, or Norfolk, Virginia, or Phoenix, Arizona, where I lived for a number of years. So, on that, what are climate normals and how do we understand what a normal climate is for a given region? Well, this link will be in the description below. And what this is, is the link to the uh, NOAA National Center for Environmental Information. And this is informing us and providing us data on U.S. climate normals. If we were to scroll down a little bit on the page here, you'll actually see a link to actually download some of this data for yourself. So read this out real quick. The U.S. climate normals are a large suite of data products that uh, provide information about typical climate conditions for thousands of locations across the United States. Normals act both as a ruler to compare today's weather and tomorrow's forecast and as a predictor of conditions in the near future. The official normals are calculated for a uniform 30-year period and consist of annual such seasonal data, monthly, daily, and hourly averages, and statistics of temperature, precip, and other climatological variables from over 15,000 US weather stations. Such a cool source, and one that I think you'll probably be using as the semester goes on. Next one, meteorology. What is meteorology? Well, meteorology is the study of the atmosphere and the processes, whether they be physical or chemical, that produce and lead to weather. Versus climatology, which is the statistical analysis of weather data that we use to identify the characteristic long-term patterns of weather and the temporal shifts in those characteristic patterns, climate change. How do we understand the weather in a given place and the climatological norms of a given place and how in contemporary times we're deviating from that? How are what we know to be a standard or climate, how are those changing and what's driving those changes? And the study of atmospheric processes is also climatology. So the study of atmospheric processes that produce characteristic long-term patterns of weather. So we've learned meteorology, we've learned climatology. Let's take that a step further. 
And one of the ways that we understand climatology is through paleoclimatology, which is the study of past climates using proxy climate data. And there's a whole myriad of different proxy data sets for climate. We'll really dive into some of those this semester. But here we can see a log. Well, what is what can a log tell us? It tell us a lot. If we look at some tree ring data, and there's some pretty incredible tree ring data uh, out there, we have this record back to the 1500s. So in what we call the pith of the tree, the center, the circle at the center of the tree, uh, that's called the pith, that dates back to 1527. And based off of uh, the width and frequency of those rings, we know how old the tree is, and we know how the weather conditions drove that tree's growth in a given year using a method and a technique we call dendrochronology. So here we can see, you know, certain years and certain events like the 16th century mega drought, which shows up here is very, very thin lines um, showing that there wasn't that much energy to produce and to grow the tree. Whereas other years were very wet or, you know, other dry you know, years as we were moving on. But we were able to use tree ring data and other paleoclimatological data to examine our past climates and how those have changed uh, over centuries now. We'll get into some more of those later in the course, but if you're interested in learning more about uh, dendrochronology or specific tree ring reconstructions, uh, I would point you to these two papers by Edward Cook et al. Uh, in the journal Earth Science Review, it's a very prominent journal in our field, on the North American Drought, Reconstructions, Causes, and Consequences, or, uh, or and, and or, um, tree ring reconstructed mega droughts over North America since uh, 1300. And that's in the journal Climatic Change by David Stale and others. Both of those are from 2007. Um, so a little bit older now, but have some incredibly powerful data sets and really teach you about how we understand through this particular method, uh, climate, and how we extend that into paleoclimate to learn about how our world and our earth has changed over centuries and millennia. Uh, so with that, that's kind of some of our uh, concepts and terms that we're gonna be really diving into this semester. Next to come are things like uh, climate classification systems, uh, one called Kepin, uh, that we will be learning a whole lot about. And then we'll really start dealing into some of the atmospheric uh, drivers of climate across our world. So stay tuned and we will see you soon.